start here and then the ball is with you three. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Marcia and in name of your experience, I'd like to thank you for joining us at this live. Your experience is promoting a series of webinars, one per week so far. And this live stream will approach the topic Corona Reality, the new digital school of the 21st century. Uh, it will be mediated by Jaron Edel. He's an inventor and a an entrepreneur and is connecting with us from Israel. Thank you, Yaron. Uh, also here with us, Victor Sanakato, the director of Motor2 project at UNIS Group, and Julia Lopez de Cale, the designer of Motor2 at UNIS Group. Thank you all for accepting our invitation. Uh, before we start, I'd like to thank also Asinet and UNIS Group for their support to this event today. And if you have any questions or comments, please write down at the chat. We'll be pleased to answer. Hope everybody enjoys our meeting. So we can start now. Uh, I don't know, Yaron or who wants to start? Yeah, please present yourself. We present ourselves and we start with the questions. Okay, let's go for it. Okay, we are we are already on. I guess I. I okay, we can, so no, we can start. Um, so I was uh, thinking that we are going to start a conversation, or that I start, you know, uh, just strictly talking. Uh, um, so basically what I do uh, uh, in my professional uh, uh, career, uh, I'm an entrepreneur for a long time. Uh, I've been working in the fields of uh, technology and uh, impact and social change. Uh, uh, I've been part of a lot of different grassroots, in, uh, grassroots initiative here in, uh, uh, in Israel. Uh, I live in Tel Aviv, and for the last five to six years, I've been focusing specifically on innovation and education. Uh, I have a company uh, with two partners called Esteban Solutions, uh, 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 where we help schools, K-12 schools, to adapt to the 21st century. Uh, and this corona outbreak caught us in the middle of figuring out what we are trying to do as a company. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We've been uh, working for you know a year and let's say a year and a half, and, and uh, we tried multiple things. Uh, we didn't strike exactly you know the the the, the specific thing we want to do. Uh, so we started this coronavirus uh, outbreak uh, crisis, uh, where we had you know a couple of clients, we have a couple of projects, and we were looking how we can create something new. Um, so basically, the you know we're really thinking and you know talking together. We see this a crisis as an opportunity, and we want to be able to do something really important during this crisis. And we initiated a simple uh, Facebook post in a big uh, uh, educators uh, Facebook group in in Israel, uh, uh, asking or inviting people, the community, uh, uh, to join us in building a, 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 um, a man. Manual, online manual uh, will be aimed at schools, parents and students in order for them to uh, adapt to this new uh, age. <clears throat> and uh, uh, um, we posted this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, post uh, just two or three hours after the Minister of Education uh, uh, said that they're going to close out the schools. Mm -hmm. So everybody was in panic. Everybody was in panic as our clients and, and partners as well. So we were thinking together, what can we do? What can we initiate in order to make people calm down, you know, get a bit more sense of control about what's happening? Uh, so we decided to post this uh, Facebook uh, 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 post. Uh, uh, and we got, you know, with a simple Google form and we got like, you know, I don't know, a couple of hundred of people wanted to, to, to do it. To do wow. it. 
uh, so we decided to organize in 24 hours, uh, you can call it a write a ton, <laughs> a hackathon <laughs> for write <laughs> Uh, where 200 people uh, uh, wrote simultaneously uh, uh, a handbook uh, and published it on the website. I can share my screen just to show uh, uh, you people. Uh, um, let's see. Do, do, do you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. yeah. Uh, so this is the website. It's in Hebrew, but I'll try to explain it to you. Uh, um, so basically, it's uh, aimed at helping educators and education uh, uh, students uh, uh, to adapt to this new mode of quarantine. Okay. Uh, uh, I have some kind of, of, uh, uh, of noise in the background. Could you put uh, on mute for a second? Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Uh, uh, um, so... Yeah. Um, um, so, oh, uh, Marsha, could you put yourself on, on mute, please? What? Uh, sorry. I, I have some strong noise in the in the, in okay. the sound here. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, um, so this uh, uh, this uh, uh, manual that I'm sharing with you now uh, was built by 200 people in 24 hours. It's divided into three main sections. It's uh, uh, students, uh, 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 parents, and uh, teachers. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, the main uh, idea behind it is how to help the learners to become uh, uh, self-learning people. Uh, because the main problem in education uh, uh, is, uh, uh, you know, it's a day-to-day -day problem is how do you get the students and the pupils uh, uh, to actually, uh, you know, learn by themselves. That's uh, the main biggest problem. And now in the Corona era, it's even more complicated to do it because, uh, 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 you know, in, in normal days, you have a teacher who can control the daily schedule of the pupil, right? He, he tells him when to go to the restroom, when to go on a break. He controls his whole day. And now, during the corona era, uh, uh, the control has shifted to the student mm -hmm. because now we can decide that the internet is not working <laughs> and nobody can tell him nothing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so, the, so the idea was how we can, uh, 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 how we can adapt uh, 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 to this new era, taking into account those new sets of rules that needed to create it. So, this uh, uh, um, this uh, manual was built around this premise. So we published the manual on the first day of the distance learning here in Israel. So this was on Thursday, on Thursday, uh, just before the weekend, uh, uh, when the uh, uh, Minister of Education uh, uh, announced that the uh, that the schools will be closed, uh, and we uh, 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 put this manual online on Sunday evening. Uh, um, and, you know, there is religious people in Israel who do not work from Friday to Saturday, so it was a really on tight schedule. And uh, uh, though, and it was 200 people who wrote it together, a bit more than 200. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's a crazy uh, operation to do this kind of thing uh, simultaneously. Uh, uh, and this community decided to take it, this project, to the next level. Uh, uh, because we understood once we put this manual online that uh, there is a lot more uh, 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 need uh, in education about those ideas that we started to build. Uh, uh, so the next, uh, uh, the next uh, uh, step uh, um, was to actually try and build a new education system adapted to the Corona era. Uh, uh, so this is a big mission and this is like a big, big challenge. Uh, uh, but first of all, we, it's more fun when it's big. <laughs> it's a lot <laughs> more fun. Uh, and it's easier, you know, to get people on board when it's big. Uh, uh, um, and the need is actually a lot more, uh, uh, you know, basic than just adapting to the, co the Corona era. Uh, um, the need as, uh, you know, the, the, the organization or the community uh, defined was... Uh, in order to create, you know, this, this self-learning uh, ability for the student, 
um, there is one very, very effective way, and it's to use curiosity. Uh, uh, if we build the curriculum around uh, uh, the curiosity of the student, then he will be able to be self, a uh, self-learner. It would not need somebody to tell him what to do because he's so interested in what he is doing. Uh, uh, um, so you can really work with that in any direction that you want. Uh, so taking this premise, what we did is we bid, uh, we build a school system. Uh, we call it the greenhouse because it's the idea is kind of the same of a greenhouse when you have plants who uh, uh, grow in different uh, atmosphere and specialized. Uh, 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 in specialized condition in order for them to grow and meet their potential. So it's the same idea uh, 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 with the students. Uh, we do not call students or pupils, uh, we call them differently. Uh, they are not students and not pupils, they are learners by definition. Uh, teachers are not teachers anymore, they are guides. Uh, 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 and the school is not a school, it's a greenhouse. Uh, there is no lesson, no lesson anymore. Now there are challenges, and challenges is the main uh, pedagogical engine uh, of the whole organization. So the idea basically is that uh, a, a learner, uh, let me show you maybe, you know, well, how a learner meets this kind of new school. Let's do it. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, okay, great. Uh, so this is the uh, 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 um, the, the uh, manual. Uh, uh, the next thing we did, this is the greenhouse. This is the landing page of the greenhouse. Let's do it .org .il. Uh, if you're a student, you click here. Uh, uh, then you have uh, 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 an onboarding uh, form uh, with all your uh, 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 information. Obviously, that will help us uh, uh, enroll you in the school. Uh, from gender to uh, uh, social media uh, uh, nicknames. Uh, uh, then he gets a phone call uh, uh, from one of our team who explain him what is going to happen and what is expected from him. And then he gets uh, 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 to uh, uh, enter the, uh, the actual platform, uh, uh, the uh, greenhouse platform. Uh, uh, and here he can choose between uh, uh, five different uh, 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 five different challenges those challenges are uh, uh, specifically built uh, uh, as orientation challenges <clears throat> orientation that means that the students uh, uh, choose one of them for example uh, boredom in corona days this is this challenge specifically aimed for uh, 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 obviously uh, uh, 12 year olds and older uh, um, and he choose uh, the exact challenge he wants from one of the five, he gets enrolled, he gets a WhatsApp uh, a link, he gets a Zoom video room link, and uh, uh, they have a meeting. Uh, the first meeting will be at 10 o'clock uh, on the morning. And then they'll start working on the uh, uh, challenge. Uh, uh, after he finished the first challenge, which is the orientation challenge, he gets to an open platform where each learner and each guide can offer a challenge to the community of learners. And then each learner and each guide uh, put themselves in the challenge they are interested in. Uh, uh, so um, you can have, for example, a guide who will offer a challenge, but no kid will come to his mm -hmm. challenge, which is a great outcome in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and in that process, excuse me? The, the platform is just open at every way. You just study what you want to study and you, you challenge people and what kind of subject you want to challenge. There is no kind of rule at all. Uh, uh, there are no rules as a classical, you know, the classical, uh, 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 you know, paternalistic top-down approach of education. Uh, what we are doing is we are enabling uh, uh, taking the, the approach of the enabler, it's, you know, it's just, you know, giving, you know, you know, rough lines of what you need to do and then help him understand and define it. So in that way, you do not need really rules. Uh, uh, you do not need uh, grades. Uh, you do not need homework in the classical sense. Uh, 
so we finished the first pilot yesterday. Uh, uh, we had 50 kids in the first uh, 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 MVP, Minimal Viable Product. Yeah. Uh, uh, those 50 kids, what was interesting about it is when, you know, the Zoom session with the guide finished, and, you know, it's, let's say, end of the day, you can say, they stayed in the room, uh, in the Zoom room, and continued to work for a couple more hours without any adult. Uh, 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 and they actually, you know, build different solution and uh, build different things. Uh, this Sunday, we're going to open the first uh, open platform where, where everybody can uh, offer their own challenges. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, at, uh, in, in two weeks, we're aiming at getting to 2,000 students. Uh, uh, and then four weeks in 10,000 students. And we want until the uh, end of May to be with 100,000 students. Wow. So, but the objective of this greenhouse, is it like to be a digital school kind of thing? Uh, I wouldn't use the word digital. It's just because we're now in the Corona era, then all the interaction are digital. Uh, uh, okay, but yeah. we are planning about, you know, what we're going to do right after the corona and how to translate it to an offline approach, you can call mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But so far, it's a um, kind of informal education uh, platform. So, like, it's do you have plans uh, of being recognized by the Ministry of Education or something? Uh, we have mm, a much more ambitious plan. Uh, we okay, plan tell us. This, approach, this approach to be the mainstream approach of education. Okay. Uh, we aim at restructuring the education ministry in order for them to be able to work in <laughs> the approach that they are working. Awesome, man. I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We cannot wait for government to, to create change. I mean, government always follow change. They do not create it. Uh, you know, real change comes from a grassroots uh, approach. Uh, and this is why we feel, I mean, you know, we are more than 500 people who are working on a daily basis. 500 people who do not have a job, who do not get money, are closed at home because people feel the urgency of actually trying to... to to shape this education system into a much more valuable uh, 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 institution. Uh, you know, because the mechanism, the system is uh, not creating value. Uh, uh, you know, it's easy, uh, you know, I do not need to tell you the problem of the education system. I think it's a very much talked uh, issue. Uh, uh, we are now trying to build a practical solution. Mm -hmm. So this is like our approach. Our approach is to be ambitious. Uh, it's to look at the impossible goal and actually achieving it. Uh, you know, we are operating for three weeks, let's say, three and a half weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, in those three and a half weeks, uh, we have more than 500 people building a school, an online school. In three weeks, we actually build the school. We just finished the first, uh, the first cohort. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so we really look, you know, in a... Uh, I'm going to use this word, though. It's a very, it's it's a dangerous word, but, you know, in a, a revolution type of state of mind, because really want to change the priorities of decision makers in the education system. Uh, we need to adapt to what's happening right now in our reality. And we mean that people are close at home. And if they are close at home, we need to touch them, to talk to them, to interact with them in a totally different uh, way. And education ministries around the world are actually doing the same mistake. All over the world, they are doing all the same mistake. They are trying to do the same thing, which is not good, <laughs> uh, they did before in, those, in this new situation. It's mm -hmm. impossible. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Yeah, totally. this, is, this is really interesting because Hula and I have started a, a job of research in, in education mega trends for 2003 and we have read about a, a lot of trends that are going to change the education in a really specific way at the next 10 years and when we heard about your project we got really excited because 
uh, we could see a lot of these trains uh, inside the project at a really practical way that uh, uh, it's it's almost the, the meaning of everything we have studied so far, putting the same project at the, the most nice way as possible. So uh, I would like to know what kind of trains have you studied to base this project on? How do you could find 500 people to build a school in three weeks with such as alignment to put this kind of tool at the project? Uh, well, it's a complicated effort. Uh, uh, the methodology we use uh, uh, is very much inspired by the open source movement. Uh, uh, you can call it an uh, uh, organized mess. Uh, uh, it's kind of the organizational approach. Uh, there is no central uh, 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 central planning, uh, 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 you know, approach. It's more of a Distribu distributed type of planning approach. Uh, and the way to coordinate all those, all, all those people is uh, I and the management team uh, to actually, you know, communicate, communicate clear goals. Uh, once people are talking about the same goals and the same outputs, then, you know, every, everything aligns around those goals. Uh, uh, so, you know, our job is to communicate uh, the best way possible, you know, uh, 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 what are we trying to achieve together uh, uh, in order for people to, to join? Because as you say, you know, it's, it's not easy to join this kind of, of, of thing. Uh, uh, but I think we also hit, you know, a great timing in terms that people feel that the earth is shaking uh, uh, virtually. Uh, uh, so it's a great, uh, you know, thing for us to actually use. Uh, and also, it's, you know, it's our community. I mean, we work in education for a lot of time. Me and my partners, you know, I have two partners. Who one of them built a big NGO. The other them is, you know, is a, a technological superstar. You know, he work in Intel and different, you know, companies. And, you know, we, it's really like, you know, our work is, you know, knowing those people and organize them. Uh, uh, and we had a big, big chance of actually, uh, you know, getting, you know, community partners who are very strong uh, with the pedagogical chief, you know, is actually an ex school principal, for example. Uh, uh, and we have like our marketing expert uh, uh, is a teacher entrepreneur, uh, uh, you know, so everybody is in, you know, in the, in, in the scene, in the innovation scene. And also it's important to say that in our team, we have teenagers. Uh, uh, we have a 14 year old, you know, and a 19 year old and a 22 year old. Uh, 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 and they actually are significant. Uh, um, so we tried to really build it as a grassroots effort. Mm -hmm. yeah, it sounds like a bunch of different skills put together to go to the same goal. And uh, we know that you are a big skills defensor. So how do you think this platform will be able to develop different kinds of skills at every learner that's to use it um uh, i was invited by the unis group this september to come uh, to brazil to give talks and in the plane going back uh, uh, from brazil back to home on the plane i watched a movie uh, uh, and this movie was a documentary about uh, you know great athletes uh, and this was the story there was the story about the biggest catcher in uh, food in American football history. I do not remember his name. I think it's Rice, something Rice, I think. Uh, 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 and he was talking that uh, when his parents were, when he was a kid, like 14 years old, uh, his parents will, you know, uh, put the light in his room off and he will, in the dark, throw the ball in the air and catch it for like, you know, 200 times before he falls asleep. Now, this behavior, uh, uh, if you think about what was the, you know, what was, what enabled this type of behavior, it was you had a, 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 a clear goal for him. He, he wanted to be a, 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 a football player and he was curious about it. He was all the time trying to, to practice it and to work it. Uh, uh, the light was off, so he had some kind of uh, 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 not a good condition. It was not the perfect condition for training. 
and he had the liberty to do what he thought was in, important. Uh, and those three things, when you think about it, is actually the, uh, uh, I would argue, maybe the, the most effective way to get most of human skills uh, uh, because people are, are in different situations. Uh, uh, their lives take them in different paths and, uh, 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 you know, put them, them in this situation where they are not in their, uh, 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 not in their comfort zone uh, uh, is, actual, is actually where all the learning is happening. Uh, 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 so we, I would argue that this approach is much more effective in skill learning. Mm -hmm. And what, what kind of skills, when you say skills, what kind of skills are you talking about? Wow. A lot. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, it will be empathy because uh, you are co collaborating with different people that you do not know. It's an online, you know, meaning for the first time you have like a blind date, you can call it. Uh, um, so you need to develop empathy in order to be able to communicate in a good way. The second thing is communication, obviously, the way that you phrase your, your chat, the way that you ask the question, the way uh, uh, it's all communication. And so uh, it's a very critical and important skill. Uh, uh, teamwork. Uh, teamwork is a, um, I don't know any field in which teamwork is not relevant. Uh, it's really gives you, teamwork is the methodology itself. I mean, you work together on a challenge. Uh, uh, so you learn from a very young age on how, on politics of group, on, you know, on uh, how do you organize people around a shared uh, goal, How do you communicate your message to other people? Uh, so this teamwork is actually very efficient. Uh, you can think about, you know, from planning to critical thinking to analytical thinking uh, 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 to self-learning, obviously, be able to learn new things because now in the project, I need to put a new plugin in the WordPress uh, website. So let's go and learn WordPress because it's going to be, you know, so mm -hmm. you, you, you solve problems. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and that way, uh, you you are uh, you are building the most basic uh, uh, cognitive skills, uh, mm -hmm. which actually can be used in any field, from physics to arts, uh, to philosophy to uh, uh, technology. Uh, it all can be used the same because you need to know how to communicate, how to cooperate, how to learn, how to digest information, to understand which information is relevant, which information is not relevant. Uh, to do us mm -hmm. uh, to synthesize the information and to get to a conclusion all those things are important and in this uh, approach we are really putting the focus on on mm -hmm. those things and also you before you mentioned uh, curiosity which I, which i also think is a skill that you didn't mention now but but you mentioned before and it's really funny because i i think curiosity and and like creativity are things um super important and the other day i was watching you probably know the the uh, ted talk of ken robinson on creativity i think um creativity. sorry schools kill creativity exactly That's an... that one man i i watch it like <laughs> at least once a month i watch it because he's also super funny do you know it Vitor? no okay i'll, I'll send it to you later because it's freaking amazing And I also, I wanted to, to ask you how you um, enhance cur curiosity and because I think curiosity and creativity are very interlinked. And I wanted to ask you how you, you think of enhancing it through these programs. And, um, so I'm going to find... Uh, uh, uh... I have this, uh, I want to open like the document of uh, uh, the main uh, uh, pedagogical uh, uh, director. Uh, he actually explained in a very easy way. Let me just find it in, and I'll be able to explain it. Mm -hmm. We actually have an approach on how to create, uh, uh, on how to allow, uh, to enable uh, curiosity. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and there is three main uh, 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 components in a pedagogy that want to bring out curiosity. The first one, uh, relevance. Uh, uh, relevance is the most important thing uh, in order to 
ignites curiosity. I mean, what the learner meets needs to be relevant to his life, to his identity, to his meaning, to his, uh, uh, you know, to his community. He has to be able to connect to it and has to be relevant uh, to his life. This is the first part uh, of curiosity. The second part uh, uh, is the emotion. Uh, 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 how uh, do we, uh, how, uh, do we, is, um, is the kid allow, allowed to actually go and, and, and explore this curiosity? Uh, uh, how uh, uh, feelings are uh, giving a safe place to be able uh, to talk about them and, uh, 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 and, and to build a process around them? Uh, so the second part is, uh, uh, you know, uh, he's allowed to express his own feelings because in an environment in which uh, it's not allowed to talk about things, then going after curiosity will also not be allowed. It has to have an openness and a, 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 and a safe place in order for kids uh, 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 to actually be able to express themselves. And the third one is the connection between the kids and themselves and the connection between the kid and the guide. Uh, 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 relationships uh, 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 are a big, big uh, uh, place where curiosity is actually manifested. Uh, you can see it in conversations of friends, right? Uh, uh, friends are a uh, mutual uh, conversation and know how to talk to each other about it uh, uh, and also have a significant uh, adult in the process. The guide uh, uh, also help him to actually build uh, uh, the process and actually to follow this. So if I'll summarize, uh, uh, the pedagogy that creates uh, 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 curiosity is uh, uh, built of three main uh, components. The first one is relevance. Uh, 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 the, uh, it should be relevant to the day-to-day -day life of the student. The second one is feeling, a place that is open to express feelings and open to failure and open uh, uh, um, uh, um, to, to an open conversation. Mm -hmm. And the third one is is uh, relationships, relationships between the kids themselves and between the kid and the significant adult. Those three things are like a system, or you can call it a petri dish, a petri dish for curiosity. Mm -hmm. Man, so so important. And I think especially for me, like what is especially important is that openness to failure, which is also something that the that Ken Robinson says, right? That uh, in schools. Mistakes are the worst thing that a kid can make. So, like when you, you get a fail, yeah, you get an F. exactly. If you do something wrong, man, you're you you're lost. You're the worst thing. And like you're if you trouble. don't, exactly. If you don't fail, you don't learn. So you have to fail. You have to be. You have that openness to to failure, right? So I think that's man. I so so agree so much. Yeah, and it's also the reason that we are trying to find new words for, you know, the different uh, institutions inside the school. This is why we call it the greenhouse, not the school. This mm -hmm. is why we, we call them guides and not teachers. This is why we call them learners and not students. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because we want to create this new set of rules uh, 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 in order for this, you know, for this ecosystem to flourish. And using, you know, the existing, syst the existing system is it, it it will be hard, you know, it will be even impossible to actually mm -hmm. put all those ideas inside the existing system. So we need to rethink and uh, and actually try and action and create massive action uh, uh, around those ideas. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are talking about curiosity and about the educational system. And I'm really curious about how can we are going to build a curriculum based on curiosity inside the, the, the loss. What do you think about that? Inside the what? What was the last word you said? The loss, the legislation of the... the ah, the, the regulation. Yeah. I see. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I have kind of a revolution. <laughs> so I'm kind of, yeah, I'm kind of... <laughs> We need to change the law. So, you know, I don't think that, that we should meet regulation. I think regulation should meet us. Uh, I think actually regulation in education is, is the reason that education around the world is in a value crisis. Uh, adults should stop deciding for kids what to learn. This is the main idea. Uh, adults should stop interfering in what's interesting to children. 
and you know uh, putting you know uh, education in this regulatory framework and the way that the regulation is designing nowadays in most of the world it's a negative thing in my opinion uh, uh, and then those regulations should be uh, uh, changed I, g I just give you an idea it's a bit different all around the world right but for example the main uh, one of the main uh, counter innovation regulation that exists in education is uh, 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 you know the uh, uh, the autonomy of schools uh, how much schools can you know hire new teachers fire new teachers how they can decide about the curriculum how they can decide about the community the more the school is autonomous the more healthy the education system is um, in most of education system, not in all of them, but in most of the one that I'm familiar with, uh, 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 the central government or central federal uh, uh, government has a strong control over what's happening in schools. They are the one who are paying teachers, not the schools themselves. So it creates like a disconnect uh, uh, between, you know, the different service providers inside the system. Uh, uh, it creates... Uh, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, schools, principals cannot fire bad teachers. For example, it creates this problem. Uh, 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 you see how teacher training is, is designed, is designed in a top-down approach, not as a communal specific uh, uh, surrounding. Uh, uh, so you look at how uh, the regulation in education is designed and is designed at making the students fail. It's designed at making the student not to meet their full potential. It's the way it's designed, and it's hard to argue in a different way. Uh, 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 and, you know, think about how education is measured, right? It's also, I think, the most crazy, craziest thing. Uh, you know, uh, how, how education is measured today uh, in, a broad, in a broad general sense, uh, uh, they measure, you know, how the linguistic uh, uh, abilities of children, how the mathematics, ability of children and you have a couple or two more uh, you know big criteria does it does not say nothing about how good the education system is because uh, you know if i get good grades in mathematics doesn't mean that i'm going to do something in my life that's going to be meaningful for me it does not mean i'm going to meet my potential so the failing education itself uh, uh, so like whole regulation and the whole structure of education worldwide uh, should be reshuffled. So to your question, I'm more of a Che Guevara type of person. I'm <laughs> 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 all about barricades and, you know, and the <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can see this platform huge. I can see it all around the world. I can see it in, working in any kind of, of education system. And uh, your, your talk leads me to a basic school, basic education system. And as we grow up, we start to learn more specific things until we find our professions and there are some professions that if you're lucky yeah yeah at if you're time. lucky yeah <laughs> and there's uh, a, a lot of professions that uh, need specific knowledge to be to be to be done and do you think about how platform how this platform could uh, attend this kind of specific learning that people need to do at college, for example? Yeah, uh, very interesting question. Um, when you think about uh, it's the uh, regulated uh, profession, okay, we call it it's the regulated profession. You have like uh, lawyers, you have doctors, you have, I think teachers even are regulated. Uh, you have, uh, you have a couple more, right? You have like four or five uh, more professional regulated. Uh, uh, the regulation in those professions are mostly important. Uh, I would say in, in you do not need this regulation in law, but that's my opinion. Mm -hmm. But for example, for health uh, practice, there is a big uh, 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 rationale for creating some kind of basic standard for people to meet. 
um, I would say that our approach will actually give tools to those future doctors to be able to uh, uh, learn by themselves more efficiently. Uh, they will be, uh, I think, much more efficient team members in the hospital, uh, uh, and they will be able to uh, uh, really feel empathy towards their patients. Uh, uh, um, so I think they will be great doctors. Uh, uh, it means also that if you look at the, uh, uh, you know, the curriculum uh, in uh, in those studies, uh, uh, it's uh, the approach is actually a very knowledge-based approach and not a skill-based approach. Uh, and it's kind of weird because the you know the information in medicine is changing like on a daily basis. Uh, uh, so obviously there is a need to have some kind of common uh, starting point, you can say. Uh, but you know the the studies of medicine is really really structured in a way I potentially think are not meeting the full potential of the students because it's too much structured. And the human mind needs a bit more of, you know, of, uh, uh, let's say, less structure in order to be more, uh, to meet more its potential. Uh, we have a question that uh, actually meet a little bit with what we are talking right now from Adriana Cavalcanti. Uh, please, and what about our students of health area? What uh, are we doing in this moment? Help us. Uh, that's that's a big issue right now <laughs> in Brazil with this uh, Corona crisis, of course, with the institutions that are where you can learn medicine. How can you do it um, from uh, in a virtual way, in a, a digital way, uh, when you when you must have a lot of practice? Uh, so it's also a problem with the laws and regulations and and so on. But also, how do we do it? And I, I think uh, that's the question of Adriana here. That's a very complicated question. Uh, a very complicated question. I mean, those times are really putting us like with the back to the wall. Uh, uh, and we need to think in a different way in order to create massive action, in order to get you know, the, the education that we all need. Uh, uh, there's not an easy uh, uh, an easy answer. Uh, I am not, uh, you know, I'm a big. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm formal education. I think is 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 uh, uh, not meeting its full potential. Uh, um, so I think that each every student should really be creative about how he creates his own learning uh, uh, path or learning process especially in those days, uh, because uh, each student is a lot more by himself, is a lot more, uh, is less, uh, 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 there is nobody who's watching him, who's telling him what to do. It's also, it's the same in higher education than in lower education. It's the same concept, basically. Uh, uh, um, so I would urge you to try and find real world problem that interest you in your field of interest and try to solve them from the comfort of your home. Try to create value from your knowledge in your immediate community. If you are a medical student and you live in a town like uh, Virginia, for example, right? So try and reach out to your community to see what you can help your local community with your skills that you do have. Uh, uh, I really believe in a practical approach for learning. Uh, uh, you know, in Israel, the army is mandatory. So there is a, a saying in the army to that uh, the best way of learning is by the foot. It means that if you do a mistake, people make you run. So you won't, uh, you won't forget the lesson, right? Because you run because of it. Uh, uh, but the idea behind it is to be practical, is to do something, to feel it, to, to be there. And I think it's the best way to uh, take advantage of this period in order to create you know, a, a big value. And I just connected to that. Okay. I know. I know that, um, for example, in Spain, the government asked for people who were studying, I think it was their last year of, of medicine, to like go to the hospitals and go help. And so I think there's, right now there's, as a doctor or someone studying in the health area, there's a lot that you can do um, at this. And you, you need to do it smartly. It's important to understand that exactly. if you want to help, 
if you want to help, you can create damage. And what I mean by that is, you know, when you go to a very uh, uh, pressured uh, system, like a hospital system in this day, you, you need to, to find the right way. It's not even the right person. It's the right approach in order to be able to give help. Because, you know, taking people's uh, uh, attention is actually very, very uh, 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 expensive in those settings in the hospital. Uh, um, so that you know, th those things are really uh, uh, it, uh, there are times that we need to do. We need to take you know a big uh, responsibility and to think about our action uh, all the way. Mm -hmm. For example, I know that in Floripa, which is where I and v and Vitor live, uh, there are some initiatives of doctors or students who are uh, instead of going to hospitals or whatever doing. Uh, helping with people who have other issues not uh, related to coronavirus and helping them, you know, going to their homes, um, telling them, you know, answering questions or giving them some kind of medical attention, not not uh, very urgent, let's say, to prevent them for, from going to hospitals where they're, you know, they are right now just um, working with the coronavirus mostly um so you know there are a lot of things that you can do and so i think um yeah just like kind of um realizing what what the the situation is around you and like exactly thinking what can i do to help so that i don't over um over help. I, yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's also it's also a great learning opportunity i mean if you look uh yeah. The, if you talked about an interesting TED talk. I was uh, there is another TED talk. I don't remember who was the presenter who talked about empathy. Is not uh, not empathy. Um, uh, well, when people give, you know, they are really charitable and they give everything. Uh, really um, selfless yeah. people. Uh, okay. There is a word for it. I don't remember. Uh, like uh, sharing. Altruistic. Altruistic. Altruistic exactly. Yeah. yeah, altruistic yeah. and optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so there is like a TED talk who say that altruism does not exist in nature, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is an in interesting concept. And it's okay that you find, you know, what you can gain from the situation. I think it's an okay approach. Uh, uh, so think, you know, about the situation, how you can enhance uh, 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 your skills in, uh, in affecting and creating value to the people around you. That's critical. Mm -hmm. All right. Talking about altruism, I would like to talk about money. <laughs> you put 500 people together to work while the quarantine was going on and the earth was shaking, like you mentioned at the beginning. And, uh, well, uh, the quarantine is going to end at some point. And uh, this platform is going to, to become a huge business. How do you intend to pay these people? How do you intend to make this model business run? We watched the revolution OS you suggested us to watch. And uh, well, it's clear up a lot of stuff, but this kind of question I'm still having. And I would like to know, okay, we are ready to go to the market. We are, we have a lot of clients, we have schools, we have universities. How this business model is going to work after quarantine? Well, that's a, such a complicated uh, question. Uh, um, I have to say that we are really thinking a lot of people about how we're going to do it. Uh, obviously, the uh, uh, the Linux uh, business model is very interesting. Also, the WordPress business model are interesting. Those are two big uh, open source uh, softwares. Uh, uh, specifically how we're thinking about doing it, we are 500 people, so we are going to uh, uh, create this NGO in which all of those 500 people are equal members. Uh, uh, this NGO will have the intellectual property of this software uh, that we are building right now, and they will uh, uh, continue to offer services to improve the software. Uh, 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 so we will raise money philanthropically in order to keep this uh, uh, sustainable on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, 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 the NGO going to train uh, 
uh, the community members, those 500 people, to create businesses around the platform. So we're going to create, you know, a, a, an industry uh, around this approach. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, the business model will be that there is a philanthropic NGO in the middle of it who has the intellectual property of the technology. Uh, uh, and we allow the members of the community to offer services to schools uh, uh, around the technology itself. So these people who offer services are volunteers or are they? Now everybody's a volunteer. Now everybody's a volunteer. But uh, looking people... into, the, into the future. Yeah, I mean, it's not a far future. I mean, we're talking about two or three months from now that we'll uh -huh. be able to start to offer services, you know, to different municipalities, to different, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, school districts. So, yeah, the, you'll have a new way for teachers to get money. They will be able to offer their services to different schools uh, with a digital approach. Uh, we're really going to try to shake up the way that uh, uh, education is made and also in terms of how the business model of education is designed. Mm -hmm. And, oh, sorry, you can go, uh, We just uh, have a question here from Brenda. Uh, she's from Unifagot. And she's telling, hi, here in Brazil, we still have difficulties in showing our students that the new digital schools is possible and can be good. And there's another question from, from Brenda that's related to this one. They are resistant, uh, resistant in relation to virtual classes, even in this moment of coronavirus. What approach do you advise educational institutions to use with their resistant students? Uh, um, we talked about it in the beginning. So we talk, yeah. it's basically what the approach, the, the platform itself, doesn't matter. They do not say no to virtual or digital classes. They say no to classes. It's important to understand the differentiation between. It's not the virtual part of it they don't like. They do it all day. The problem is the actual content. It's the approach. It's what, uh, what teachers say to students. This is what those students are resistant to. It's actually the, the point uh, I was trying to say, because now in this digital age, kids have the power to resist to those kind of approach. And this is an, a great example of what is happening in homes all over the world. Kids are resisting, you know, the classical education system. I'm going to tell you an interesting story from China. Uh, 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 when China, you know, a month ago, when it all started in China, uh, uh, so there was qu quarantine, uh, uh, so everybody was at home as well. And there is this uh, 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 this uh, app called DingTalk. Uh, it's an app owned by Alibaba, so it's a you know a big corporation. Uh, 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 and this uh, uh, this app, you can think about it as a WhatsApp for homework. So you know the feature in WhatsApp where you have two blue Vs, right? Mm -hmm. it says that you read something. So think about this feature, but for homework. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this is what the Chinese used. And uh, uh, the kids got really angry about this app. So what they, what they did, uh, uh, they thought that, you know, if they will be able to organize and take down the rating of the app in the Android store, then Google would take off the app from the store. No so, way! Yeah. So the app started the Corona crisis with a 4.9 stars in the Google App Store, which is the highest, so one level behind the, the highest. And the last time I checked, it was around two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, this, this, uh, uh, this story is actually an example about how kids are resisting the classical education approach. So Brenda, for your question, I would say, try and do something that you did not do before. Do not teach them. Do not teach them. Try and be empath um, empathy towards them. Try to uh, find what the curiosity is. Uh, uh, and do not do the same thing you used to do before. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Simone asked here, uh, it's great to think students with autonomy and study by challenge, but how to get the participation of students with more difficulties and those who act by the least effort the theory? Um, well, from the experience that we have, we see that this new uh, approach actually creates a whole new dynamics in the school. Uh, uh, so, you know, the people who, are, uh, who take the approach of the least effort, they take the approach of least effort. You know, you have people all around us who are like this. Uh, uh, so it's not a bad thing by definition, in my opinion. Uh, 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 and it's okay if you do, you do the least effort. Uh, uh, I think that if you feel that a student do the least effort, it means that he's not interested about how he's doing and he's only doing the mandatory stuff in order for you to get out of his day-to-day uh, -day, uh, life. Uh, um, and, and that's a hard switch to do. It's a hard switch to understand that Students, you know, if we think about education as a digital product, a technological product, our users are telling us that they did not want to use our technology. And it's like we do not hear what they're trying to say. But we see it's, it's a behavior that says that they do not want this technology. Uh, um, so I'm sorry if my answer is not constructive, uh, uh, Simon, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, but I personally think that it's okay to have a least effort uh, approach, uh, you know, as a general thing, it's okay. We need to give place to people who look at life differently and find a way for them to develop. Uh, 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 um, and, you know, not every student can, you know, participate in the same way. Um, so it's important to create, you know, uh, the differentiated approach uh, um, in that regard. Yeah, I totally agree. And I also think that, uh, you know, when, when Simone say, talks about the students with more difficult difficulties, um, I think when you use already that approach of um, challenges instead of like a very uh, hard structure where you have like very, also like very strict grades and um, e evaluation methods and everything, when you give challenges and you give flexibility, also students with more difficulties um, thrive in that kind of, of method. Because for example, I know my, my cousin who is eight, year old, eight years old, he's dyslexic and he has a lot of difficulties. But when, when he's given more flexibility, more time to read, more time to do whatever, he's fine. He's, he just, he has other um, talents, like he's more sensitive or whatever. So when you give that freedom and that flexibility, that is um, already partly covered, you know? Yeah, so that's a great point. You know, the, the movie that I told you before about the athletes, so Ken Robinson is also uh, in this movie, <laughs> so you should see it. Mm -hmm, uh, okay, I will. And he called this an unstructured time. Unstructured time are very important for child development, just for him to be bored and mm -hmm. to try different stuff, you know, talk to dolls, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Each kid is a different thing. So this unstructured time is really critical. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I have my last question, Yaron. What's your biggest motivation to write this education manual or a hip hop song? <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's different motivation right so, so i write i write hip-hop and rap for myself at home when i want you know just to have some fun with myself it's like my own game uh, you know and for my uh, daily day-to-day uh, -day, uh, activities uh, uh, you know building a school is actually what uh, uh, gives me a lot of passion and not that hip hop does not give me a lot of passion. I mean, I, 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 I needed to be a rapper, so uh, you know, I, I, I will be a big rapper someday. <laughs> <laughs> for this kid, for this kid inside inside of me. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are men with two loves. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. And I. Oh, sorry. Okay, it, okay, Julia. Is it over? Come. What time do we end, actually? Well, it's we have now one hour, uh, exactly. 
And uh, I don't know if you have any questions, Julia. You go yeah, ahead. I was, I was when when Simone asked about the students with difficulties. I also thought of um, students because I I am a bit concerned about people in Spain, for example. Um, there's a it's a there's a big concern in Spain about uh, students who do not have computers or access to to internet at home. And I don't yeah, and I don't have an answer to it because. Right now, I don't see how these people can uh, be helped in the sense that um, if it was another time, they could go to a friend's house who has a computer and do like work together or whatever. But right now that we are isolated, I don't have an answer. Yeah, and yeah, it's a big problem. And there is also, there is not clear data of about how many people do not have computers okay. I mean, in Israel. So we don't have this data. Uh, I think that, you know, the approach can actually solve this problem uh, you know just now in my home i have a computer who just need to be formatted and he works great <laughs> so from mm -hmm. us we just need to coordinate the effort and to have the actual data about the people who need the computers mm -hmm. uh, so this is actually i think a problem that can be solved mm -hmm. today it can be solved today in this situation it can be solved mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think we'll we'll stop it now. It, I would like to thank you, three Aaron, Julia, and Victor, for great talk. It's <laughs> it's really great talk today, and all the participants. Um, just remembering this, we have recorded this live, of course, and then it will be available in YouTube or in our educational platform and we will write down a document with all these incredible ideas that were flying today and thank you again everybody and see thank you, you Marcia. Thank you. It was thank, you. Nice. thank you bye bye bye, bye.